everyone. Oh no, in this video, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I decided to do a tutorial on a game where you can kind of do this. I have to do the right arrow, that's how I'm going to do it for you guys. So I'm going to save this project. What we're going to do, we're going to go to my stuff. We're going to create. And then we're going to start with this basic white thing where we can drag the cat. For now, I'm going to delete the cat. And what you're going to do is you're going to grab arrow. Like this. Now what you're going to want to do is an arrow like that, right there. You want to, you want to duplicate this arrow until there's four. This one, you want to pass this up arrow. This one, you want to put this down, the, the down arrow. This one, you put this up. The code for this game is like very simple, I'm pretty sure most of you can comprehend it. So yeah, you get them in the position you want, and then, Delete the other costumes. Okay, you have your things ready. I'm actually gonna switch the up, up, and down arrow because that's what I have in my game. I'm working on. Um, and you're gonna want to go to this one, and then you want to turn. Now we have our arrows. Position them a bit better. Just that, and that should be good for now. Now what we want to do is we want to set the positions of the arrows. We'll do is we'll be when clicked, go to this position, just in case. We'll switch, go to front layer, and then we can copy this front layer thing over to all the others. You can go to front layer, so what you do is you click, and when clicked, you drag out another go to block from there. I bet uh, this is basically pretty simple. You're going to basically do this for all the arrows, so I'm going to jump ahead, and I will be back in a sec. I am back, and as you can see, I already created the arrow. You can see if I drag it, I click the flag, it'll immediately go back. And now, I'll click save now, and then we'll start getting to coding. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to duplicate that. Duplicate that. Duplicate that, and duplicate that. We're also quickly going to make a little line. We're going to use our paint tool. Zoom out. Then we're going to drag. It's not the straightest line, but oh, what I'll do. You'll do is you'll put it right at the top. No, that's really bothering me. Put it there. Yeah, this is very bumpy. There we go. That's better. So now, once we have that in place, I want to drag it right here. And you're going to want to go right here, negative 100, place it here, and you want to gonna go again, negative 100, what you're going to want to do, And then we go there and go negative 100 again. Now 
that isn't the best. So we'll go down again to bed. And let's this bit. So now all these top sprites, these, these top ones, and these little sprites right here, need to be our arrows. I'm going to hit the block onto these arrows. We're going to take our first up arrow, and then we're going to go when clicked. First we're going to go X26, or whatever coordinate it is at right now. Here, put that. So now if I move the up arrow, click the flag, it should go there. But again, all the other stuff went to. So we have to fix that real quick. And you get the basic idea of what you have to do. You just have to put the arrows in place. Five, seven, nine, oh. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to drag this out, and the easiest way to do it is to drag in a new one, and go front layer, because you always want these arrows in the front layer. So what we can do here is we can just change that by negative 100, and we can do 2, and change that by negative 100. So, yeah. Now, if we drag all these out, it should go back to its original. So, yeah, we're going to name our title Rhythm Game Video Tutorial. What you're now going to do is we're going to start. First, we're going to actually pick a background. I'm going to go with the concert right here because it seems more natural. And yeah, so um, what we're going to do now, we're going to take the up arrow thing. We're going to add, uh, we're not actually going to take that. Sorry, I'm being very bad. We're going to do when I start as a clone. Oh, actually, no. What we're first going to do, sorry. <laughs> I'm messing up. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to set when clicked, set ghost effect to 100. And we're going to I start as a clone. We're gonna go clear graphic effects. We're gonna go go to front layer. And we're gonna go change Y by 10 with a forever loop on it. So now if I create a clone should move up. The thing is, this. Now, if I create a clone, it should infinitely move up. You just spam it, and it'll create infinite sprites. So, what we do actually have to do is we have to, like, Every time I create a clone, nothing's happening to the clone. They don't stop or anything. 
um, that's where this, uh, thing that I accidentally threw, uh, thing I accidentally deleted, the line comes in, big red line, this is what makes it so that the arrows can't go off screen, no, no, okay, what we're gonna do is go into code, drag, we're gonna drag, we're gonna drag this big, it's not like we drag it, big red thing off screen there, and we'll put in our code right here into the up arrow, when I start a scroll, we're gonna go if touching, um, we could even say edge, but I think it's easier to say sprite one, or we could call this the red line, up, touching red line, we're gonna do, delete this clone, and how about we add in a sound effect, like, wacky sound effect, and we'll add will be our miss effect. So now we'll go start sound. Because then if if we do a play sound miss till done, it will wait until the sound is done to delete the clone. And that counts as a delay and we don't want that. So if I go click click and do that look, see if the arrow touches the red line, it'll disappear and play the sound. Now let's add it so if it hits this arrow it will that was a hit. So we'll do another if statement. Drag this one out for now. We'll do if touching we'll go we'll do up arrow if touching up arrow then we're gonna put an if statement inside of that. If key up arrow is pressed, then we're gonna go delete this clone and we're going to start sound. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go coin sound effect, coin sound effect. These are just placeholder sound effects that we start mapping the songs. We're gonna speed it up a bit. Then we're gonna go start sound good. Now, if we go play the game, we create a clone, we can actually hit the button. Let it pass through. Oh, I almost forgot to add the And now, when you create a clone, you don't hit it, it goes up to the right line. But if you hit the note at the right time, it works. There you go. That is how to make your note. To add more visual effect to it, what we can do is go to up arrow. We can duplicate this and we can copy its color and make it a bit darker. We can make it. So we switch costume to arrow one d and then we go when no we're not gonna do that we're gonna go if we're gonna copy if we're gonna go if key space key up arrow press then we're gonna drag it in not statement that not the up arrow press. You probably can do this with an if, like an else statement, but right now I'm doing the easier option, at least for me. So we're gonna duplicate this costume. We're gonna do that. So now 
it's not working. Because we have to add the, for the forever loop to it to make it work. Now, as you see, we'll get some visual feedback whenever we hit the up arrow. I, I've actually been using this feature for things like if the mouse is hovering over something, you know, the shade of that color or anything. For some of the games that we want to play. So right now, if we do create clone myself, you can see that we have some visual feedback. And it kind of looks okay now. We'll go ahead and save the project. And we'll start doing the same. In fact, I think we can do... When I start as clone, we'll go and do it for the. Uh, it's more glitchy. Uh, it didn't let it go. So when I. Okay. What we'll do is we'll throw this one right into our backpack. Now, what we can do is we can pull up the script from our backpack. And then we can do if touching down arrow down arrow. We just change these functions. Down arrow if key down arrow is pressed. If touching red. So now we do this. But if we stop this, save the project, and then we create a clone of myself, it worked. But it doesn't have any sound feedback. We do not have a sound called good. So what we're going to do is make another coin. Let's call it good. Then we're going to get a wobble. Or what we could do is we can put this in our backpack, go up here, and get it sound miss. Now, if we change this to good, and then click miss, it should work. Now, let's quickly, before this video ends, because this is already about 20 minutes, we're going to quickly add some visual feedback. That we go. We're gonna go switch costume to arrow one C, and then we're gonna go to this up arrow, and we're gonna drag. But we're gonna switch select down arrow, down arrow. We're gonna do arrow C two. Are you doing the right and left arrows in the next video? I hope you will enjoy doing some of your tutorials on how to make a rhythm game. This part one. See you guys later. Bye.